How much do you have to spend to get a fully mappable standalone ECU for your car? Thousand pounds? 500 pounds? Well, if you're willing to get your hands a little bit dirty, it could be a whole lot less than that. Let me show you how. Welcome to Making for Motorsport, where we spend less, make more, and go faster, and we show you guys every step of the way so you can do it too. During the individual throttle body series we're doing, there's been a few questions coming in about the ECU I'm running. Now, ECU is a major decision and expense in any of these kind of builds. So is there a way we can get the big money results with spending only a little bit of cash? You bet your ass there is. But before we get into that, if going faster and making your own stuff sounds like your kind of thing, hit subscribe and the bell so you don't miss anything. And if you're planning on putting ITBs or a standalone on your car, then put something in the comments. I want to know what your projects are. Very interesting, there's some great stuff going on out there. And if you're waiting for the third ITB video, it's coming, I promise, it's coming. I've hit a few snags, Nothing serious, it's all gonna be in the third video, but if you're interested in the meantime, I'm gonna be putting updates on all my projects, this and everything else, on my Twitter feed handle thing down here. I'm a bit new to it, can you tell? That's enough of that. Let's get into the cheapest way to get a standalone, fully mappable ECU on your car, the Speedwino. So the Speedwino, and and this one's mine, is a fully mappable ECU that you build yourself from an Arduino, a board, and a whole load of these things. If you've heard of Megasquirt, then this is similar, but using the Arduino microcontroller means that all of the circuitry to do with the CPU and the IO is already done for you. This keeps it simpler and cheaper without sacrificing any of the core functionality. This guy figured it all out, Josh Stewart. Hi guys, Josh here with Speedwino, and a bit of fun in today's video, I'm gonna be playing around with the Teensy 4.1 board and starting what is probably one of the fastest aftermarket ECUs ever made. And since he released it into the world, it's developed a big following and a forum full of people who, unlike me, know exactly what they're talking about. So there's a really big resource out there to help you get your project up off the ground. So if it's that cheap and it's based on an Arduino, it can't do all the things the Megasquirt can do. Well, hang about. I know what you're thinking. There's gotta be a catch. It's gotta be missing features or there's gonna be engines that you can't run. Well, it's got everything you need if you're running a standard install. It's got four channels of injection and ignition. So that means four banger, you can run sequential injection and coil on plug a V8, wasted spark and batch injection. So V6, V8, straight six, turbocharged, supercharged, it's got you all covered. And in terms of features, well, just look at this list. It's got pretty much everything that the other ECUs have got. The base models from Link, and from Omex, and what comes standard on your Mega Squirt 3. I know what you're gonna say, David, you can go further with a Mega Squirt 3. Well, yes, you can, but you've gotta buy the extender board, and you're then getting into spending some big money. So based on that, I think the speed we know measures up pretty good. So, so how do you make one? I'm not gonna go through every stage of how to build a speed we know, because really, it's a lot of soldering. Broad strokes, number one, you pick your board. Number two, you download the bomb, import it into a Mauser, Farnell, DigiKey, any of those websites, press buy, and then you get a lot of components arrive and you just get to soldering. So if you're new to soldering and you've not done any projects recently, then I recommend you get on Amazon and buy one or two of these project soldering kits. They're well worth using to get your eye in and trust me, you don't want the first resistor you're soldering in to be on your Speedwino board. Ask me how I know. So first stage is to pick which board you're gonna go for. So there's lots of different boards. There's third party boards. You can even buy these things fully assembled, but 
for this channel, come on guys, that's cheating. But the main choice you're gonna to wanna to make is between a version 0 0.3 and 0 0.4. The 0 0.3, which is what I made, comes with screw terminals so you can easily wire this in and kind of figure out your installation on the car. And it was very useful for the flexibility that it gave me. Or you can get the version 0 0.4, which comes with a connector block built in to the board. So if you're going into an existing wiring harness, that's probably slightly easier than doing what I did, which was patching everything through to a connector once I'd figured it all out. So if you don't fancy doing a few hours of soldering, then there's plenty of plug and play options. If you are a Miata owner, you are covered. You just unplug your original ECU and plug in a plug and play unit. Perfect. Alternatively, there's plenty of people out there who will sell you a fully assembled version of your normal classic Speeduino for you to make up your wiring to go into. So buying one pre-made might be a little bit cheating, but whatever you guys need to do to get out on the road, doesn't matter. Get out there, start tuning your car. So that's it, you've built your Speeduino, you've got it wired into your car, what else do you need? Well, software. So just like Megasquirt, Speeduino uses Tuner Studio. It's inexpensive, easy to use, and you absolutely need it, because this is how you're going to connect to, set up, and tune your Speeduino. So Tuner Studio also lets you data log, and there's a companion piece of software called Megalog Viewer that lets you look at these data logs in a very useful and organized way. So this is very useful if you're tuning on a as-you-go, on the road kind of basis where you're not gonna be able to be at your laptop. You just wanna drive it, collect all that data, and then have a look at it on your sofa. Well, you can tune your car whilst drinking a beer. What's not to like? Something that isn't essential, but really is very, very useful and everyone would recommend you get is a wideband O2 sensor. So an O2 sensor tells you the air fuel ratio from the exhaust. Now a narrow band, which is what most cars have, only gives you an accurate signal at a very specific point in the air fuel ratio range. But a wide band gives you a much well, wider band of readings. So you know exactly what you're feeding your car and whether you are getting a rich mixture or a lean mixture. So using the wideband means you can capture all this data about your air fuel ratio on the move in your data log. And even better, in the paid version of Tuner Studio, you can just let the software tune your car all on its own, automatically, whilst you drive. What could be better than that? So I have one, it's the Lambda Cable 2, the LC2 by Innovate. It's pretty much as simple as it gets, but it's pretty much all you need. What else can you do with it? Well, because it's open source and it's coming on the back of Megasquirt and there's lots of really smart people out there, there's lots of cool stuff to do. So I grabbed myself a 40 pound eBay tablet and a four pound Bluetooth module and put them together with MS Droid software and got this. So this is my in-car dashboard and it gives me all the kit pieces of information I need and I can tune the car with it whilst I'm out on an event without having to lug a heavy laptop around. And if that wasn't enough, there's people out there doing stuff like this. So the sky is the limit. If you can think of it and you can code it, then hey, you can make it work with Speeduino. So we've said it's cheap, but how much does it actually cost? Well, leaving out some of the small expenses like a laptop to tune it and a car to put it on, then a unit like this, I just cost it up. So this is the version 3.3, .3, but a brand new 3.7, will cost you $160 or about 115 quid. Now that's with going to DigiKey for the bits and getting one of these, the, Vol the VR conditioner, 
straight off the shelf. I've also included the ABS enclosure and the Arduino into that money. So all you need to do is add a bit of solder and a bit of time and effort and you've got yourself a speed wiener. So what I've not included is the additional costs for Tuna Studio upgrade because you can use the free version and I've not included the cost for the Wideband O2 sensor because you're gonna have to buy that pretty much whatever ECU you buy. So if you've been watching this long, then hopefully I've converted you. And if I have, then just two things, hit the thumbs up and go and buy one. So even if Speedwino isn't the absolute best ECU, it is by far and away the most accessible way of getting into fully standalone ECU tuning. If that means that more people out there are going to do it, then that makes the world a better place as far as I'm concerned. Now you know of a better option or a cheaper option, then please put a note in the comments because I would love to find out what it is. So it's worth saying, I am not an expert in ECUs. I did not make the Speedwino, I only made my Speedwino. And I can tell you that all I did was follow the instructions that are freely available online and it has worked pretty much first time for me. So if, if, if I can do it, then so can you. So that was just a quick explainer from me. I'll leave all of the links to all of the places I've talked about in the description field. And if you've got any questions or you think I've missed anything out or glossed over anything, then ask a question in the comments or get onto the forums and look at the literature for yourself and then get out there and start tuning. It is more satisfying than you can believe. So that's it from me. If you've enjoyed this, then please check out my other videos or subscribe. And in the meantime, Keep your mixture slightly rich. Catch you later.